so we're here with Zadi Diaz of uh, Epic Foo and yes. Smash Face Productions, yes. and you probably all know her from Epic Foo, but she actually also has a production company that yes. does a lot of stuff for both Epic Foo as well as other productions for other people. And uh, you were just on a panel yeah, we here were at Streaming just Media. A web video coming of age. Okay, and is it coming of age? It is actually. You, you're, we're going through the the growing pains of, of the coming of age. Yes. <laughs> but um, which is always exciting. I mean, I think the, ca in the on the panel we touched on how it's changed even from when I started um, with the show. We started June 2006, and three years ago it was such a different landscape than what it is today. The players were different. The the ideas were, were, were different. Were you doing real media? We were doing we were doing this show at the time. It was called Jet Set, and we were focused on a specific audience, and we wanted it to be interactive, and we wanted to do all these things. And once we put the show up, we, we realized that there is this community there that's speaking back to us, and we're we have to listen to what they're saying. And with that kind of listening and growing, the show shifted itself and, and became kind of this living entity and kind of so. Morphed. So was it originally called Epic Foo? It was called Jet Set. Jet Set. Yes, originally. And it was just you and a couple of friends kind of it having was, fun? or It was my, me and my husband, Steve Wolf. Okay. And we figured, you know what, there's this underserved audience online. Um, we love culture. We love art. We love music. Um, we love technology. We love the web itself, um, the culture that's kind of burgeoning on the web, the mashup culture, all this stuff, this really interesting stuff that's happening online that nobody's really covering. So let's take all of our interests and put it into a show. So from a video standpoint, nobody's really kind of curating all that stuff that's going on in that world and delivering it as a packaged product to people. Right. I mean, there are shows out there. Um, one of our huge, uh, a huge influence was for us was Rocket Boom. And they, they um, I actually started with them as a, a correspondent. That was kind of my introduction to uh, web content. Um, and then from there, it's kind of like we have a different take on it where we're kind of focusing it more on a kind of more f like crazier, fun kind of uh, the pop culture side of, of, of internet culture um, yeah. and how it affects us, how it affects art, how it affects fashion, how it affects, you know, culture around the world, how the web is kind of like changing us in a way. But in the beginning, was there a business model or was it kind of, was it like, hey, let's do this and it's fun? Yes. In the beginning, it was, let's do a show. It's fun. Uh, there is an audience. Let's see where we can take it. Um, uh, we had full-time jobs. We yeah. did this basically after we finished work. We stayed up. We developed, wrote, shot, edited everything. We were up until four in the morning and then we would do it again the next day. So for nine months, this was the process of just getting a show up, figuring out what would work online, figuring out what, we can, what the possibilities were, what tools we could use. For nine months, it was just out of pocket. And until we grew that audience, at that time, having 10,000 people view a show, one episode was great. We were like, awesome. So once we started getting an audience, uh, that, that, that audience coming back more and more, we figured, well, you know what? We want to make sure that, we want to make this scale. We, this could be something. This is more than just having fun. This is more than just kind of, this could be, you know, something that really speaks to the generation that's growing on, up online. And, and where were you posting it at that time? We were posting it on our website. Um, and but we like were, using YouTube or we just your We were using Blip TV. Blip? Blip okay. yeah. Which, which you we still were, use, I think, Which right? we still yeah. use. Um, they're amazing. You have a, a problem, you call them up or email five minutes later, they contact you back, which is unheard of. Yeah. So we and they kind of grew up with the entire online video, you know, community. So they they come from that grassroots kind of like they really care about what they're doing. So they were a great partner for us. And so we continued using them. Then YouTube came on. On at the, I remember when YouTube, you know, first came on, and they were just kind of a couple of guys trying yeah. to trying to get content on their on their on their site. And so we started using them, and we started using Vio and other video distribution sites and just putting our content everywhere because we didn't want it to just be on our site. And, and so that's how you currently do it. You do push it out through all the viral video Absolutely. platforms. We push it out everywhere because you don't, really don't know where the, your community is going to be until you actually hit it, yeah. you know? So you may not get a response on YouTube, but for some reason it resonates on break or daily motion. And so then you start focusing in on that community and, and kind of building that audience up and then pulling them back to your home, pulling them back to your site. So we started creating uh, a community uh, 
on our, are on our own site called Mix. And so we had all these members come in and post videos and photos that we would integrate into the show. And that's how we kind of gave them a sense of ownership for the show because we would have we have this daily this uh, weekly content and they would contribute their ideas their opinions so just quickly what tools do you use to allow people on your site to upload their video whatever tools they want I mean basically the tools that that we use are the tools that are out there so if they're uploading video to YouTube we'll just embed that or okay. we'll, yeah and so that we're not um, they're not beholden to what we produce they can use whatever they want and we'll link to it or we'll you know incorporate it in somehow got it and so fast forward to 2007, you're like, hey, something's going on here. W when did you start thinking about getting advertisers and sponsors? Once we started getting a regular audience, we thought, you know, this is something I think that um, is monetizable, but we can really make this our career. This is something that we're passionate about. So why not, you know, merge what we're passionate about with what we're doing on a daily, as, as a career. So we started thinking about who the partners were out there, who the people were that uh, could, we could work with. And at the time, it was Next, Next New Networks. And they um, were just starting out. They were trying to figure it out as well. And they were just great because at the time, we didn't know what we were doing. So we just figured it out together. And yeah. it, you know, for it's kind of the ideal partnership, I think, because you, you're listening to each other. You, you lay all your cards on the table, and you say, I don't know what I'm doing. Let's figure so, it so out. So what, what were some of the initial issues you were all grappling with? Well, at the initial, I think it's just kind of, you know, this. they're doing super distribution, what they're, they're doing now, which worked. Um, I think at the time, it was just a matter of how do you keep people coming back, and how do you make content that's interesting? How does it scale? Um, how do you bring other people onto your team? And how do you, now you're running a business, and it's not just you and one other person. Now you're, you know, you have a producer or another editor. Now you have, you know, uh, people that you're delivering your content to. Now you have to um, tag your content. You have, to, you have all these other things. I mean, even uploading content would take us hours, you know, at the time or, you know, until Tube Mogul came along. It was just kind of like we'd had to upload every single yeah. video to every single place. So as time went on, I think the, the tools allowed us to kind of consolidate a lot of our efforts and make it easier for us to just, you know, focus on making the content and our partners would focus on the business part of it. Because what we're good at is making the content, making sure that we're communicating with our audience. Those are very different jobs. Community, making the show, business, marketing, I mean, all these things kind well, of add up. So uh, was was Next New Networks helping out on both the distribution and sponsorship and ad sales and yes. things like that? I mean, they were giving us a licensing fee for each episode, and that gave them, you know, the opportunity to seek out sponsors, and uh, we would talk about how to integrate advertising, what would work. That was one of the kind of, I think, Kind of talking out of you know how, did, how how does advertising work online? What are people going to respond to? Being that people want free content, um, are you going to be disturbing the view, the, the the experience of viewing the show by kind of inserting something that just seems to come out of left field? So figuring out how that would work. I mean, we tried everything from you know um, burning the ad in and kind of like figuring out how to kind of do ad you know uh, product placement and and went through those trial and tribulations and response for your, from your community and very vocal community saying what works and what doesn't. And that just allowed us to kind of grow and really tweak. Well, and it seems like what currently does work is I was watching where you were uh, playing around with your new oh, right. Pumas, and I'm wearing <laughs> Pumas right now. Um, basically, the host kind of talking about the brands and talking them up kind of old school radio style. Is that kind of the current model? I think we're at that point right now. Um, with Puma, it was really interesting because we made a game out of it. Um, we wanted it to be more than just, um, you know, here are these sneakers, they're great, but okay, well, why? And uh, my worry is that I want to make sure that people feel like they can trust me. So the authenticity of authenticity I actually is wear these, I'm exactly. not just peddling. Uh, exactly. Uh, making it fun because um, we're doing a moonwalking contest. So bringing in um, our community in that way, we're, we're having fun with it. We're just kind of, it's a game. It's not so serious. You know, it's, it's, it's not, you know, and letting them know that, you know, we're independent producers and we have to make money. We have to make sure this is a career as well as a show. So and they're very supportive. We had such a great response actually from 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 that stint and, and it was something that kind of showed that, you know, as long as you're authentic, as long as you're communicating with the audience, as long as they know that, you know, you have the best intentions, there's not really a problem with yeah. with them knowing that you, you know, 
it's it's also um, has to be sustainable. Yeah. You know? So basically, you, you were with Next New Networks. They were help. So it was they would actually pay you up front before you produce the next episode. It was a contract. So once the episode went up, you know, uh, then it would be a licensing fee. So every month, you know, or every t episode would be. Um, whatever amount of money for for that episode. But did you know in advance that they would at least guarantee you yes. a certain amount of money? Okay, so yes. you kind of knew, cool, it was a we can deal. now take right. this money right. and apply it to the production of the next episode right. and know that when we deliver that one, we'll get some more money. Right. So we kind of know that Absolutely. we can, is that kind of when you quit the day job? Yes, that was okay. exactly when we quit the day right. job, and which was a relief because it let us focus really on not only creating the content, but what was happening online and kind of allowed us to really take a sit back and take a look at what are we going to do in three months? You know, it's not just looking at what we're doing now, but how can we, you know, ramp things up? How can we bring in people to work with that will make this easier so that we can focus on exactly what we want to focus on and really, you know, bring in people that are passionate about specific things. So if it's just an editor, they're that's what they want to do. If it's you know producer, that's what they want to do, and yeah. we can just focus on you know partnerships and all that. This is really just like anything else. So that the editor doesn't also have to do sponsorship sales exactly. and cold call people right. and <laughs> exactly. put a gun to his head and blow his brains <laughs> out. Could be a Got little it. taxing, you know. There, yeah. there for an independent producer, I think there are many nights where you, if you're not already up, you wake up at 4 a.m. and you're just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> what's happening you know but uh, at the same time it's really exciting because I think everyone who's involved right now is so passionate about it and really believes that this is going to be the future of and it just wants to be along for the ride it just really wants to kind of like it, it they're pioneers in the real sense where they're just kind of you know taking that machete and kind of like cutting through the grass and it's that exploratory phase where it's like we don't know where we're going but it's going to be awesome yeah you know? so you you had a relationship with that and the, the Next New Networks relationship was from when to when? Um, that was, so we had the show, we started June 2006, it, uh, nine months kind of incubation period where we were working it out, then we had a year contract with them. Okay. And then uh, once that contract was up, we thought, well, how can we scale? What are, who else is out there? Who are the other players? And so we um, partnered with Revision 3 at that time. Um, and that was interesting. Now, now, did Next New Networks, were they trying to re-up with you or did they want to buy you or? There were a lot of negotiations going on okay. at the time. So we were just kind of figuring out what, what would be um, the most sustainable kind of option for us that would let us scale and let us kind of bring in other people and really build this out into a business. And at that time, um, it was a revision three that kind of like we, we figured, well, you know, let's look at this other audience that's out there because they had this dig audience and there were a lot of other untapped potential audiences that we hadn't um, really tried. So we went with them for a while and, and that was interesting because they... And was that a similar year long? That was not as... Uh, that was more fluid. Okay. So um, it was kind of kind of getting to know each other and figuring out what works. They were just starting to bring in content that wasn't kind of under the Revision 3 umbrella. That was So not only us, but they had Wine Library TV. They had other shows that they were bringing in, kind of licensing and figuring out what would work or not. Um, and so those were very two different experiences kind of coming in from working with Next New Networks and Revision 3 to very uh, similar kind of organizations but working very differently so that was kind of a really great learning experience well for us. actually that's what I was gonna ask what yeah. was the culture similar in both those companies or different it was or? a little different I mean Next New Networks was very much about super distribution put it everywhere and Revision 3 was more about focused on their community and how to kind of grow that so very different outlooks and very both very valid but very different so when we were here with Revision with Next New Networks for a year we kind of had a way of doing things where we were everywhere and then going to Revision 3 where it was more focus it was kind of a shift in everything so it was just kind of like relearning everything which was great at the same time it was you know it's just kind of like oh wait how does this work like we have to re kind of re-envision everything so in that it, in the learning process was great you know so and so I'm assuming the the spon the audience is growing at this mm -hmm. time the sponsorship dollars are getting bigger right. um, what, what's kind of been the audience growth I mean if you take let's say 2007 versus 2008 numbers versus 2009 numbers, which I guess we're pretty much at the end of 2009. Right. Um, it's grown. I, I think in total we've had 30 million views um, over since, 100. Since the beginning. Since the beginning. Okay. Um, uh, we've had a consistent community. Of, we've had, we're shown over 100 countries. I mean, we have 
viewers from different parts of the world, which is something that we really pride ourselves on, um, because we don't. Our show is about culture, global culture. It's not just about American culture. And so we're proponents of free internet, kind of, you know, we really look at firewall issues and kind of all of these things. And so for us, even though numbers are- So when you're are, talking about free Tibet and uh, <laughs> China starts blocking or, it. Or, or, right, exactly. Or we're talking about internet freedom, you know, bills and, and rights and people that get involved. We do little kind of even ARGs around what it means to to for to have a free internet and what would that mean if, if that would go away so we kind of incorporate all of that into the entertainment of the show and has china blocked some of your content amazingly no but china did buy epicfoo.cn <laughs> and yeah. then t asked us to buy it back but really we didn't need it, yeah so that government actually <laughs> that be no someone uh, there. someone, yeah, uh, yeah, someone, someone just a thrifty <laughs> entrepreneur a very thrifty uh, entrepreneur <laughs> so um so, so, but so when we look at um, our audience, we lo also look at engagement, not so much just how many people have viewed, but are they viewing it for a long time? Are they coming back? Are they being engaged within the community? Are they, we get emails constantly, which is like how people can be involved about reports that they're sending in, how about how, you know, well, all so these different things. All right, things. so, so w what are some of the ideas that your users are throwing at you of how you can better integrate them into the, the series? Absolutely, we've had things like campfire series where every show will pose a question uh, whether it be about technology or something that happens around the world and they'll respond in video form and we'll take snippets of that and kind of show. and actually put it in the show and then have simultaneously a conversation within the 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 site itself where all these people and we'll we'll, we'll either through text or photos or videos we'll have that kind of conversation and it's there for a long time it's not it does it doesn't go away um, so we have these kind of ongoing conversations, um, people that want to kind of be, you know, citizen journalists or reporters and kind of get involved in, in, that, in that regard. So you, you have a series and then you also have a site that's growing into something that's more than just the place to show the episodes. Absolutely, and that's one of the processes that we're going through right now in redesigning the site and making sure that we're bubbling up all that content and bring it, putting it front and center. Right now we have the community site where it's active and people are talking, but we want to make sure that they feel like they have a sense of ownership in the show. We're essentially the curators. We're kind of saying, this is our idea, this is how we feel about the show, this is the content, but we want you to really be a part of it because this is important, this is a conversation, this is like the next wave of entertainment. It's really that two-way, and with it, that's fraught with kind of very, you know, you have to walk on um, very delicate ground, but that's the most exciting part of it all. And are, are you using like an open source CMS for the site, or? Um, we're looking into Drupal right okay. now. I like <laughs> We and do so, a lot of Drupal uh, <laughs> build outs. So. Yeah, we're looking into that. Um, a lot of amazing features within Drupal, um, uh, intense community, um, always willing to help, um, really supportive. So we're looking at that. Um, we've used movable type in, up until mm -hmm. now. Um, we've also looked at WordPress. I mean, those are the three um, you know, things it. that we're looking at. So you're now kind of on your own. Right? Yes, we're independent. So you're, you're you had your yes. partner and then your next partner yeah. and now you're kind of so what's life like now it's it's still I mean, are, are you selling sponsorships or who's we came out of puma before that we had a sponsor uh carmex so sponsors are coming to us and and we're building those relationships until we relaunch with the new site we won't be able to see the fruits of those <laughs> labors but we have those partnerships there kind of forming um, we are, I, I guess my question is, are, are you personally wearing many hats? Like you're oh, the show gotcha. host, are you editing, right, right. are you selling, you know, calling Puma up and negotiating deals? Yeah, amazingly a lot of them have been able to come to us because of the track record that we've had, um, which has been great. Um, we, we are thinking about, well, what's the next stage in terms of partnerships so we don't have to, you know, redo the entire thing where it's like us, us doing um, all, of, all, of the, all of the stuff. Um, and we're also you know, involved in other projects where we're pitching other creative endeavors. We have fictional projects out there that we want to work on. We also have other uh, non-fiction projects that we're working on documentaries. So it's not just Epic Foo, although that is kind of like the central hub. There are a lot of different other things that are going on, which is just normal for a creative, you know, yeah. life, I suppose. So, so you're <laughs> trying to balance kind of, he, here's our main project and moneymaker and what everybody right. knows us for, but how do we slowly push forward exactly. all of our little 
side projects. Because you have wanna... to have something else as well. People always ask, well, what else do you have going on, right? So, you know, you always have to, and, and we're the type of people where we just want to have other projects and we're passionate about so many different stories that can be told and we want to tell those stories. So give me an example of the, the project besides Epic Food that you're most excited to push forward. Oh, well, right now, um, it's more interactive project. I, 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 wish, talk I, about I it. wish I could talk okay. about it, but you know what happens is that the more you get involved uh, on a higher level, the more NDAs come into play, yeah. <laughs> which is really frustrating sometimes because you're so excited about something that you really want to talk about it. But I think that the next projects that we do are more interactive. They have uh, more kind of gameplay involved. They have. Um, you know, more community So maybe something built out in Flex or Flash where people can interact and stuff moves right. around. Right, or it's, you know, in different mediums as well, you know, not okay. just online. Okay. So, you know, and, and that's what we're most excited about, what we've, all, we've always been most excited about. Okay, so the exact opposite. What uh, scares you and What's makes you stay up late at night? Um, right now i think it's just you know everyone's trying to figure out how to really have this be sustainable because you have partnerships that come and go um you have shows that you know we're talking about even on the panel you don't have that soap opera kind of you know uh legacy where on tv you have soap operas that last years and you, you can count on that online you don't really have an example of that where it's like you'll have really hot shows for a while and they'll go away and you're on to the next next project um so it's kind of just you know, how do you make this sustainable? But I think it's like any creative career where that's the way it goes. It's like if you're a producer, if you're a writer, if you're a director, you're jumping from project to project. And that's just the lifestyle at this point, unless you're, you know, a production company where it's just like when we're, we just surround ourselves with, with good talent and we, we ensure that, you know, the future is, still, is assured in some way, at least creatively. You're, there's no shortage of ideas. And you're just building your partnerships right now so that I'm not up at night sweating about, oh my God, what, what is my future going to look like? Because at least I know that the partnerships that I'm forming now are with really great people, really talented and smart um, business and creative people. And, and we are, there's something here, you know, there, this is not going anywhere, it's just, it's growing and we're at that stage where you're going to have those nights where you're just waking up in a cold sweat because that's the where we are right now, but it's not always going to be like that. Yeah. Are you shooting in HD? We are going to be shooting in HD. Previously we were not. Okay. Because it was just easier, but now we're at that stage where, you know. And, and, and what's kind of been the decision factor for you of like why should you be shooting in HD going forward? Because I think that you know you start thinking about where your content's going to live. You know you don't know. You want it to be the highest possible quality, and so that you so just it could have be that on option. TV exactly. You just have that option there. You don't have to worry about it. So why not shoot in the highest possible quality? You have a set. You know you you um, you edit it in, in a certain way that it's 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 conducive to all different mediums, and then you can scale back. It's always easier to kind of pull back than try to make something great out of not, not that great a quality. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, Zadi, thank you very much well, for joining you. us. Thank you. Really appreciate and, the uh, talk. I look forward to watching more epic <laughs> foo <laughs> and wearing my Pumas <laughs> and uh, seeing what these uh, projects are that you're working yeah. about that you can't talk about on camera. Well, uh, knock on wood or, you know. <laughs> knock on my head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. <laughs>